Okay, Masechta Bava Metziah, Daf Vav Amad Beis, um, sort of in the middle of the Daf, just as an introduction, maybe some sort of recap, or just to get our bearings where we're holding you. We are holding in the sugya of Tok Fokoyen. That's what it's referred to in, in, in other places in Meforshim. It's quite a famous sugya, quite a Kali sticker, Yesoida sticker sugya, all, 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 all about. Um, the sugi here is really split into two, but the main thing we're going to speak about today, which I believe you started yesterday, is what happens in case of, 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 of Sveikas. In the case when there's Suffolk moment, we're not exactly sure who it belongs to. So normally we say, we know Moitzi Mechaveiro Olivaraya, that we learned in Bava Kama several times, and the money stays where it is. But this sugi is specifically dealing with what's called Tkifa or, or Tfisa. If, 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 if the other person comes and, 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 and grabs the money which is, which is in doubt, does he have a right to keep it? Or do we say you have to give it back? That, what's that got to do with the Koyan? So basically, the Gemara introduces the question about, uh, from a mission about Sophic Bechoyeris, <coughs> where you have several different, different types of firstborns. But for example, Bechor Behemoth, we know that Bechor Behemoth has to go, the firstborn of, a, of an animal has to be given to the Koyan as a, as a Matona. That's one of the Matnas Kuhuna, one of the Chof Dalad Matnas Kuhuna that we also saw in Bavakama. The Bechor has to go to the Koyan. What do you have a Sophic Bechor? For example, we're not sure whether, this, whether, the, whether the mother of this animal already gave birth to, a, to an animal or not, or maybe it was, uh, wasn't a real embryo or fetus or whatever that it gave birth to. In any event, there's a doubt whether this animal is a Bechor or not. So do we say, Tok for Koyan, Moitzi in Miyodoi? That would mean if the Koyan grabbed, in, in, in other words, the Israel doesn't actually technically have to give it, because since it's a Sophic, whether it belongs to the Koyan or not. So we say, Moitzi Mechavei Olavor and the Bechor can stay by the Israel. But what if the Kohen took it? Tok for Kohen. Do we say Moitzi in Riyadu? That means to say we take it out of the Kohen's hands and put it back into the Israel because he was the Muxi to start off with. That's Moitzi in Riyadu. We take it away from the Kohen. Or do we say Tok for Kohen, Ein Moitzi in Riyadu? I'm, I'm not technically reading in the Gemara just yet, but these are the terms that, that, that are familiar. Do we say Ein Moitzi in Riyadu? means to say we leave it by the Kohen. If the Kohen grabs it, he can keep it by him. So this, is, this, this question isn't just a question about Bechor for, for a coin. It's a question like we say that any, any time there's a Suffolk in the moment or there's a Teiku in the Gemara. I'm sure you learned several times in Bavakama, there's certain Sveikas. For example, one of the cases we know, I think you even spoke about it earlier in Bob Matzi, is Shor Shonagach Esapora. Right, that's the famous Machlok with, with Rabonin and Sumchus. What do you do if we're not sure whether the Shor certainly killed the, the, the Pora, killed the cow, but the question is, did it kill the Vlad? Or not, we find the Vlad next to dead next to the cow. Do we it's a Sophic whether or not the shore killed the cow? So according to Sumchus, you say you divide it, but but that's Sumchus. But according to the Rabbonon, we say I'm always a of Araya, and um, you don't have to pay. But what would be if the Nizik in that case grabbed the grab grab took did some tfisa, grabbed some money from the Mazik? Can he keep it or not? That's totally on this shile as well. It's the same, it's the same question. Anytime when there's, when there's a Sophic on Mormon, who does it belong to? And the, and the other person grabs it. Against the Muksuk, does he keep it or not? So um, that is the that's the general question over here. Now we'll see in a second that most Rishon in Paskin Lahalacha Tosis over here, Dibur Hamaskal Poitim, Ramon the Ramon and Shal Ramon Koyin over here. Also Paskins that the, the, the Maskon of the Gemara is Tok for Koyin Moitzi in Miyodli. That means to say that the Tfisa doesn't help. We put it back to where it is. We put it. We give it back to the original owner to the Israel. And there's the famous sheet of the Rambam that, that Paskins Tok for Koyin Ain Moitzi in Miyodli. And if the if the coin takes it or anybody else for that matter, he can keep it. There's a big question in the Ramam, how did he exactly understand the mascot of the Gemara over here? In any event, let's go back into the Gemara. One one um, okay, if we have time, we'll, one one other thing I'll just throw you in. I believe Rabbi Tehel told you this yesterday. Um, what's exactly the shoyrish of the question? What what what's what are the two stars in? Why should we say he should yes keep it? Why should we say he should give it back? So I believe not exactly which Nusach Rabbi Tehel exactly explained it. But I believe he explained that Alderich, what Rav Ochanan says in, in Kovitz Aoris in Yavamas, and, and, and he explains the question like this. We know that normally we say Moitz Mechavei Olav Araya, means to say that the Cheskes moment, well, we keep the money where it is with the Cheskes moment. But the question over here is how strong or what exactly does the Cheskes moment tell? So we say that the Cheskes moment tells me, but it, 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 it's, I think Rav Ochanan said it's a psak. It's a, it's a psak. I'll say it's Vader Shalvada. It tells me that for sure we have to assume that the money belongs to, let's say, in the case of the Israel and the coin, the money belongs to the Israel. It's 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 machria for us. It, it determines for us that yes, the mammon should stay by the Israel, but but derech shel vaday. We should assume that we should we should take that upon, we should assume that 
then it's Bader Shalvada, he stays by the Israel. And if that's true, then if the coin takes it away, then we have to give it back to the Israel. Because we're assuming that it definitely belongs to the Israel, but 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 So then when the coin takes it, might see me other. That's one side. Or do we say no? But Derechta the Cheskas Mamun, the the Chazaka, that the money where it is, we keep the money there, isn't really Machria for us Vadai what to do. We just assume that I think you made it because in Hanhaga, we have to just that's how we have to treat the moment, even though we don't exactly know what happened. But we have to leave it where it is, leave the status quo, Shevel Taisa, even though we don't really know. So if that's the understanding of Cheskas Mamun, it's only really telling us that the Derech Shel Sofik is only telling us leave the money where it is because maybe it is. So then if the coin takes it, the coin should be allowed to keep it. So that's a kind of a, a general question. How strong is Cheskas Mamun? Is it Machriya Vadai that we, that we know it's these thrills? In which case, the coin who grabs it would have to give it back. Or do we say, no, Cheskas Mamun can't normally Machriya like Vadai. It only, we can assume that it's his so we know otherwise, misophic, we can we can just leave it where it is. But if that's the understanding, then by top for Koyan, we should say that in Moitzi and we other that he could really keep it. In any event, so what happened in the Gemara is I think the good a good place to start off would be for from um Tanya de Masayalach, which um Khanina La Rabba, it's in the middle of the it's in the middle of the page. Um the line starts with Haba Mealea Shiny, Omale Rav Khananya La Rabba. Tanya the Masayelach. I'm going to bring a support to you that the Gemara just said in the previous step that Rabba held the talk for Koyan Moitzi in Miyodli. That, that he doesn't, the Tisa doesn't help. He can't, he can't keep the money by him, the coin. He has to give it back. Now, Rabbi Hanan is going to bring a support for that, that it has to, the Tisa doesn't help and the money has to go back. Because the, because the, the Bryce says as follows Tanya the Masayelach. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's similar to a mission in Bechoyos. So whenever you have a suffix, the Gemara isn't going to explain later what exactly the suffix is, you can go into the deer to take Maisa from it. So this requires just maybe two introductions. Number one, Maisa Behema, as I'm sure you know, a person who owns uh, cattle or flock, uh, sheep and, 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 and certain animals, he has to take from the, from, from the, new, from the newborns, he has to take Maisa Behema. That means he puts them all into a pen, into a deer, and he, and he opens up the door, they come out one by one, and he counts them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. On the tenth one, he, I think, smashes it with some red paint or something like this. And he says, This is Misa, and that's Misa Behem. So that's what happens to the tenth one. And that, um, <clears throat> that is what he is doing over here when he's doing his Misa. So what does it mean? As fakus nichnosin le dealis asset. As fakus means that, as we're also about the Gemara is going to establish it on Dafzai and Amadalef, we're talking about. Um, a suffix of a pidyon peter chamor. Now, a, a, a chamor, the firstborn chamor, has to be redeemed with a set. That's called the pidyon peter chamor. You redeem the chamor with a set. And that set has to go to the koyen. Um, and <clears throat> that set actually is, is chayv in maise, as Rashi brings on the Gemara says later. Even though it is a matana for the koyen, that set, but it still is chayv in maise. Now, what if you had a suffix about that? For example, you had a suffix if this chamor was really a, uh, a bechor or not. And then you had to redeem that chamor with a seh. Now it's a suffix if that seh is really a pidgin peta chamor or not. That you can put into the deer to take to, to, together with the other maestras, the, the other animals that you have, in order to do, to do to take maestra from it and from whatever comes out number 10. That's what the Bryce says. The sfakers, which is a suffix, pidgin, peta chamor, this, this, this sheep that is redeeming the, the donkey, if it's a suffix, you put it into the deer to this asset. And the Gemara says, V'is al tok for koyin. If you think the halacha is that when the coin grabs it, he can keep it, means we don't take it away from him, he can keep it. How can you take this suffix pidgin petach or this suffix sheep, which is redeeming the donkey, and put it into the deer? If this se comes out number 10, then actually you're going to be giving to the coin something which is technically his, in a certain degree it's his, because if he were to grab it, we're saying, but he could keep it, keep hold of it. So how could you use this seh, which is a suffix if it's yours or the koyans, um, and if the coin grabs it, he could keep it on that side. You're using that to patter up your own behemoths in the, in the deer. Just one second. That's what the Gemara's question is. So that's the support, therefore, the top for koyan, moitzi in miyoto. Really, the coin doesn't have any, any, any bias in it just yet. He hasn't got a right to grab it. And therefore, we assume that it's, it's, it's the Israel's, and he can put it into the deer. If that's what you are bringing a raya, it's not necessarily a raya. This is not a proof of raya. 
Loiter Sayelema. Why? I believe this is where you ended up yesterday. How come my skinon could go in the lace lay elotisha behu? So Abari wants to say that Shat in this Mishnah of a Sveikis Nichnas in Latir, that the Sophic Peter Pigeon Peter Kamal goes into Latir, is talking about a specific case where there are exactly 10 animals. You've got nine, and this Sophic Seh is the number 10. The Mimon of Shach says Abaye, in this case, it's going to be perfectly fine to put the Sophic into the, to put that questionable sheet into the Deer, because Mimon of Shach is going to be fine. E bar if we say that this sheep really belongs to the Israel, and therefore, the Yisrael is really going to have 10 animals. So he's a bar chiyuva. He's chai. You only chai in maister if you have 10 animals. If you don't have 10 animals, then you're not chai. You're not a bar chiyuva yet. You're not considered a person who's obligated. So if we take on the tzad that it's really the Yisrael's, then he's a bar chiyuva. And it's fine. Shafra kama aser. We're assuming it's the Yisrael's, and he can take maister, and it'll be absolutely fine. The ilav bar chiyuva. And if you're going to assume, no, maybe this saf set actually belongs to the koyen, because maybe he has got a right to grab it, Tisha lav baris sure ninu. Then you, this person's only got nine sheep, nine animals. So then he's not having mice at all. So therefore, the Bai wants to say there's no proof over here whether the coin can take it or not take it. Even if we say that he can take it, the coin, but over here it's not going to be a problem that you're using somebody else's the coin's money to exempt you from your mice. Because if you're assuming it belongs to the coin, then you're not having mice to start off with because you only have nine animals. We're dealing with a very much some, some case where the guy's got nine animals and the 10th animal is this questionable sheep that maybe belongs to him or maybe belongs to the coin. In that case, you can put them all into the deer, all into the, to the, to the, to the barn and, 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 then, and then take mice from them. Because in any, whichever way you want to look at it or view it, it's not going to be a problem. If you view it that it belongs to the coin, then this person, anyway, wasn't hired in mice. It wasn't the bar chiyuba. And if you view this seh belonging to the Israel, then he only had nine. That's what Abai wanted to therefore take off the proof where the talk for coin ain't what's in we order. Yeah, for a question. Right, that's an interesting question, but I think actually at this point in time, we know which is the set. This, this point in time, there's, 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 there's no second suffix. That may be later in the Gemara, we're going to see a, such, a, such a case. But in this case, you have the, you have the suffix set that went in, and, and you know what it is. It could be, a, you know what it is. We don't know that suffix. So either, forget about the suffix later. We have two, two ways to go, two ways. Okay. That's what Abaye argues, exactly. So since either way is okay, says Abaye, you can put it in this fine. Hadar Amr Abaye, Abaye then retracted from what he said. Lav mil sahi. It's not true what we said. It's not true this, to, to debat the proof I was giving is not a good, it's not a good way. So we're going to keep with the proof. The Amri, the Sveika lav baris surihi. We're going to see you saw it now in the Gemara that when you have any kind of a sophic in regards to um, Maisa, you don't take Maisa. As we're about to see, the snat. Because we have a Mishnah, this is a Mishnah in Bechoyos. Kofatz, this is a bit similar to the case you were speaking about, Borg. Kofatz echa mina minuyin letoichan kulon pturi. So let's picture the scene that the guy, the farmer, is counting out the animals going out of the barn or the, or the, or the deer. Uh, and he's counting them one, two, three, four, five. As he gets to whatever, to number six, one of the ones that are already left jumps back in, right? Manages to sneak around the back of the shed and climbs back in. And now you've got a problem. Because he's, all, he's left already, this animal, but now he's gone back in, and now you don't know which of these animals in the, in the deer is been counted or not. That's what it means. Kofatz echa mina menuyin. Menuyin means it was already counted, and he was kofatz back letoichon. So what's the deal in this case? The Mishnah says, kulan turin. Every animal that's inside the barn in that case now is potter from taking maisa behemoth from it. Why is that? We'll see, we'll see, we'll see in a second why that is. But Rashi explains that, they are, that, that even if you have many animals in the deer, even if you had elef, even if you had a, a thousand animals inside the deer, they are all pata. They're all pata. <clears throat> now, the Gemara says, why are they all pata? The Isal Gadaitich Sveika Boy Isure. If you think that really, whenever you have a suffolk when it comes to Maisa Behemoth, you're required to take Maisa Behemoth from it, La Aser Mimonosha, right? You should already, you should do a Maisa Mimonosha. Let me just explain one thing for a second. 
the one the ones that left already they passed tachat. It says kol sheyav or tachas shevet you should give to Misa. But, but, but loisha, not something which is already passed under the shave. In other words, once it's already passed through, it's potter. So where that one that jumps back in is potter, and now with Mesupik and all the other ones, maybe that's the one that jumped back in and is already potter. So therefore, they're all potter. But the Gemara says, if you think that really when it comes to a spakers, you have to take Misa, so then she'll take Misa in the Why? The e bar chiyuvahu, then shapa kama ase. The e la bar chiyuvahu, nifta baminin aroi. So let me explain what's going on over here. Each 10 that come out of the, of the, of the pen, we said, become Maisa. So now we have this Suffolk sheep that jumped in, right? So what are you concerned about? That this Suffolk one, which is Potter, is going to come out in, in, in these 10. But the Gemara says there's really nothing to be concerned about. Because if it didn't, let's say you counted 10, you've still got 100 in the, in the team. You counted 10 out. What are you concerned about? If it didn't come out in these 10 that came out, the Suffolk one, the one that passed through already is actually still in the pen, then there's no problem. That's what the Gemara says. The first, the first ten that come out, let's say. That means the first ten that came out, we can assume, let's say it's not there. Then Shaper Kama Ase. Then it's fine. There's no problem. What are you concerned about? That the Suffer one did come out in that, those ten. Says the Gemara, that's still not a problem. Why? Because you're potter with what's called, we're learning a lot of new ideas today. You're potter with what's called Minyan Haroi. The Omar Rava, Rava said, Minyan Haroi, Poiter. Minyan Haroi is Poiter. Now, what is Minyan Haroi when it comes to Maisa Behema? So Rashi explains the case of Minyan Haroi, the last Rashi on the page, three lines up from the bottom. Minyan Haroi Poiter, if you want to see it inside. Hoyeloi Yudtloim, the person had ten sheep. Umano Chamesh, he started counting one, two, three, four, five. And then, Umais Echot Min She'einan Menuyin. And then one of them that is still inside the pen died. You had exactly ten. You were counting five. As you counted five, the one that was still inside died. Now it comes out that there weren't really ten over here. We said the whole chiv of mice is when you had ten. But over here, in the end of the day, you didn't get to the ten to take the mice. So what's the, what's the status of the five that left? So the halacha is, Robert says, those five that left are actually potter now from mice behavior. Because since when you counted them out, there were ten in the deer. That's called minyan haroi. It was Roy when they left to count to 10, right? When the first one left, for example, there were nine still in, and it was a potential one from 10, two from 10, three from 10, as they left. So that means they are actually exempt, but they've been now Yotzi, so to speak, Maisa Behema. However, the ones that are still inside are Chayev. And Rashi says you have to take them and, and, and we starve them to another flock that you have or whatever. It doesn't matter right now exactly what you do with them, but they're still Chayev, the ones still inside the Maisa But the ones that left already are Potter, that's the side of Minyan Harod. So putting that back to us, that means to say in a case where the, the Skofet Echa Minyan one of the counted ones jumped back in. So what are you concerned about? When you count 10, maybe that one was amongst the 10. So the Gemara says that's not a concern because Lemaisa, when you counted out each one, he was Potter with Minyan Harod. Since there was, there was a Minyan which was Roy to get to 10. So then... Um, there's no concern that even if the Suffolk one came out with them, it's, uh, it's going to be fine. So what does the Gemara want to prove from all of this? It's a bit technical, but the one wants to prove from all of this that we don't say, so why do we really say, excuse me, that when the one jumps in, they're all potter? If, if there's elef in the deer, we say if what, the one counts, the jumps again, they're all potter. Why don't we say, do me, do me manushok? Do my me manushok? Because there's no concern. Either he's not going to come out in these 10, you're fine. And if he does come out in these 10, the other ones are anyway going to be potter because once you count them out, they're potter. Why don't you say that? So the Gemara says in the top of Zayin Amadal, if this is the conclusion of the, of the Gemara at this point, what do you have to say? Obviously, there's a Gezeir Sarkosa when the Torah says the tenth animal you should give as Maisa. There's a special drosha over here, so to speak. The Asiri Vadai, Beloi Asiri Sophic. The Torah only wants you to give Maisa Behemoth. If you know for sure that this number 10 that you're giving is Chayev Vada, not if it's Chayev Sofi. A lot of the time when it comes to Sfakers, we say, you know, sometimes do it to cover all grounds and do it like sometimes in Sofi Brokers, we say these things. To cover, to cover all bases, do like this. But in any event, when it comes to Maisa Behema, we don't say that. The Torah's got a special Hakpada that we want it to be Vada, the 10th one, and not a series Sofi. That's why we say, Kofat Echa Minamanuyin, Latoychon, Kulan Peturin. If one jumped in, they're all Pata. Because now they're all suffering. And once they're all suffering, you don't do anything. 
We don't say mimon of shach in then take mice. We don't say that. So then the Gemara concludes hachanami. So to in our case where we wanted to say where Abaye wanted to learn the case of sasfekus nichnasim um, ladir lehisase that we we put in a suffix pidgin petachamor into the dir Abaye wanted we wanted to bring a ride from there that uh, the tis of the coin won't help because if it does help then you're going to be exempting yourself with his money. So Abai wanted to say that there's no ride from there because it's dealing with a case where you have nine and one. That's what Abai wanted to say. Nine behemoths and the one which is a suffix. And then that's and then you have to take my simon of shot. But the Gemara is saying that can't be the case of the of the Mishnah. Because there's no if it would be ten and nine and one, you wouldn't have to take my because we say a siri vadi omrat one flora siri suffix. So therefore we're falling back to the support. That, that when the, we start off the Gemara today with Amalei of Chananya the Rabbah in the middle, Tanya the Masayelach, Asveikas Nichnasim the Dele Sase, that when you have a Sophic pigeon Petr Chamor, we said, that said that you're redeeming the donkey with, and you're putting it into, the, you're allowed to put it into the Dere to take Maisa from them. So the Gemara said, if you think that the Tfis talk for coin, Ein Moitzi and Ose Meyodoi, if the Tfisa helps, how can you put it into the Dere? That's a bit the moment of the coin. So you're puttering your own flock with the money of the coin. So that was the support that we say the Tokva coin might see in me other, and that's the kit. So that stays the mask on. That support actually does stay the mask on. That if the coin grabs it, we take it away from the coin and we give it back to the Israel. There's no other way to learn Shat in that Mishnah. Abai attempted to learn it with a Bader Shah Mimon of Shah. The Gemara says you don't make Mimon of Shah when it comes to Maisa Behema. You have to have a Siri Vadai. If it's not a Siri Vadai, there's no Chiyav. So it must be that, uh, that really we have a Raya from this Mishnah. That talk for coin might see in oisoi miyadoi, and therefore the tefisa doesn't help, and that's why I explained to you in the beginning. I believe roi for the rishonim paskin this way because that seems to be the maskon of this gemara. The talk for coin might see in miyadoi, and it means to say he doesn't have a right to keep it. We give it back to the Israel. Uh and, it, and here's the question on the round on how he can paskin otherwise if it seems from the maskona that we do have a support to the to the opinion that the tefisa does not help. Yeah, Laura. Um, oh, when it comes to Svegas, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, correct, correct. This drush of Asiri Vada is only put by my survey, correct? Yeah, okay, let's go, let's go by to now. That was, I think, the harder part of the Gemara. So, the coin does not get in the case of Sophic Behold, the coin does not have a right to get it and not even to grab it, he has to give it back, correct? Omelay Rav Ahmed Diftin Ravina. My sfekas, my sfekas. We just said in this Mishnah, sfekas ichnasim ladir. What sfek are we talking about? Now we mentioned this before. What sfek we're talking about? But here the Gemara clarifies it. Ilay ma sfek bechayros. If maybe it's a sfek bechor, then yihiya kadosh amar achmana v'lo yishekivar kadosh. If the, the, the Torah says when you give ma'isa, the tenth one yihiya kadosh, it will be holy, right? The tenth one will be holy. Through making it the tenth one, it becomes holy. And the drasha is not something which has already got some kedusha in it. And if we're dealing with a suffix bechol, a bechol is this kodesh merechem, it's already got some kedusha in it, so that can't go into the deer. El a suffix pidyon petachamor, like we said, as we said all this all along, we're dealing with a suffix of a pidyon petachamor. This was the firstborn donkey which needs to be redeemed with a sheep. And if it's a suffix, if it's a firstborn donkey, you have to redeem it with a sheep. And the sheep is a suffix pidyon petachamor. You put that into the deer. If you were to have 10 Sophic Pitre Chamor Batoich Beisai, he had 10 donkeys which he was in the Supik about each one. If it was a firstborn, what does he have to do? He has to take 10 says, 10 sheep, and redeem each of the donkeys on the 10 of them. However, they're only a Sophic, so he's allowed to keep it, he doesn't have to give it to the Koyen. And he has to take Maisa from them. But basically, we see from here that so, pigeon petachamor is chayv in maisa, like we said all along, and therefore, when it's a suffix, you can put that into the deer. Okay, that's the end of that. Then the Gemara says, "My havi de masusa." What is the hapsak halacha with masusa? If you remember, remember masusa was the first word on that vav amud base. We saw masusa. There was a certain uh, bathhouse, right? That the two people were fighting. This is how this whole sugya. One of the reasons why this is awry with what for the sugya. The two people were fighting over this bathhouse. This one says it's mine. And this one said it's mine. And if you remember, one of them stood up uh, dramatically and was makdish the, 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 the bathhouse. And the Rabbonin didn't want to use it now. They were concerned it was maybe hectish. 
In any event, that was the that was the story with the Masusa. We said, what um what is the halacha with the Masusa? So the Gemara says, Toshma, the Omar Rebchiyavar Avin, have a Uvda Bey Rav Chista, for Rav Chista Bey Rav Huna. This certain story of the Masusa happened in the in the in the in the base Medrash, or the story was uh, in Rav Chista, and Rav Chista went to ask Rav Huna, who pushed on the the Omar Rav Nachman. He he was pushed at it. He resolved the question from the following statement of Rav Nachman. Again, the question over there really was again whether the hektish was chal, whether or not the hektish was at, actually took effect. The guy was matish it. Did it take effect in such a case? Because it's not really clear that it's his. The other guys are arguing that it's his. Is the hektish chal? So Rav Nachman says the following statement: Any mammon she'ain yochal If you haven't got access to that money through the judges, meaning. You haven't got a sufficient proof. You can shout all you want, but the Dayanim are not going to give it to you. Then that's mean that's considered that you've lost, so to speak, your shlita on that moment. So then, Eino Kodesh, <clears throat> the hektish, excuse me, is not going to be Kodesh. It's not going to be Chal. Like, does it, yeah, actually... Correct. That was that was to do with whether Shtik is Kehoidah or not. Yes, if some, that was to do with the talis. If one, if one of them grabbed it and the other one was quiet, then we assume there was a Hoidah. No, but over here, we're not we're, we're not talking about Shtik and Kehoidah over here. We're talking about the, a guy who hasn't got access to certain money that he, that he, he thinks he owns the Masusa, but he can't actually get it al-pidin. He can't get it through the Dayanim. He, no he has no proofs. So if he has no proofs, and, uh, and, 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 and and he's got no proofs and he can't be, basically he can't be Maktish We know there's a halakha that a person can be only Maktish his own things, right? If I've got a, a phone and I decide to donate this to anywhere for that matter, Hektish or the Ava Shalom Committee, I can do that because I'm the owner of this phone. But I can't be Maktish your phone. I can't say I'm dedicating your phone to the base Hamikdash. Ain other Maktish Tava Sha'ina Shaloi. You can only do your own thing. But besides for only doing your own thing, you can only do your own thing also if you've got, so to speak, um, shlita on your mom. And if it's Eina Barushusoy, as we're about to see in a second also, if it's Eina Barushusoy, that means that I've lost it. If it's stolen from me or something, then we're going to see in a second, I can't be Maktishit because also my, my, my ownership is somewhat in, in it's, it's been nigra, my bailist. My ownership has been somewhat uh, diminished by the fact that it's not right by me. In any event, the point is, is that any money that you can't get to the Dayanim, you cannot be Maktish. So, so do this Masusa, which none of them had a raya, correct, Baruch? Therefore, they can't be Maktish here. Now, the Gemara says, makes a deal. That means to say, if you would be able to take it out with the Yoni, if you would have a proof, you would be able to be Maktish. Even before you've taken it back, if you would have a proof, you should be able to Maktish. Is that true? Says the Gemara. This is also reminiscent. Good times from Bafakama. Gezel, the Lonis Yashua Bailin. If there was a, st- a stolen good from someone and the Bailim were not Miyayish, right? Both parties, also the Ganav, the Gazlan, and also the Nigzal, cannot be Makdish this Chayfet. The owner cannot be Makdish it, and the Gazlan who stole it also cannot be Makdish it. Why not? The Gazlan cannot be Makdish the Chayfet because it's not his. He might have Kinyan and as we know about, but it's not technically his. Therefore, he cannot be Maktish And the owner cannot be Maktish even though it is his, because it's Eina Berushusoy. It's not in his Rishus anymore because someone stole it from him. And the fact that it's out of his Rishus means that his Koyach Abailus, his strength as an owner on this object, is somewhat diminished because it's not in his Rishus. So he can't be Maktish anymore. Even though this is a thing that you could take out with Dayan. As she says, Stam Gezela, you could take out with Dayan, and you still cannot be Maktish so the Gemara is asking that the ability to take out with a proof the object from the Dhanim isn't enough to make you an ownership to be Maktishit. Says the Gemara, me savras the Masusa Metaltalin Askinan. Do you think we're dealing with a Masusa, a bathtub, which is Metaltalin that somebody could grab? But the Masusa Mekarakoi Askinan. We're dealing with a, 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 a bathtub which is like built into the ground, right? Taki Yochol Lahitia Badayanim Burushusse Kaime. So in such a case, there's a difference between metaltalin and karaka. But we know karaka's got a special thing that karaka ain't not nixelis. This we saw in the end of Avakama. Karaka's got a special din about it, that even if somebody steals it, it's not technically halachically 
considered stolen, and it's not halakhically considered that it left the rishus of the owner. We say the rishus ba'aleh is still in the rishus of the owner. So such a case of karaki, if it's yocholo itzir ba'dayonim, if you've got a raya, then we say you can be matushit. However, metaltalin is different. Metaltalin, when the gazlan picks up the metaltalin, he has a Kenyan gazela on the metaltalin, and that's why Rabbi Yochanan says a metaltalin gazal v'loynis yash rabaynim. Then you can't be matushit, even though you can be moitzi ba'dayonim. But that's metaltalin doesn't help to be able to be moitzi ba'dayonim because it's left the rishus of the owner through these Kenyani gazela, which the gazlan has on metaltalin. So to to summarize the Gemara, because we're now going to go over to a new Gemara. What we're saying right now is, can a person be maktish, a thing that is, let's say, out of his rishus or stolen from him, uh, if he could be, if he can't be moitzi with day on him, he's got no rai, he for sure can't be maktish. What if he could be moitzi with day on him, he's got a rai? So it depends. If it's karaka, he can still be maktish. Because we say karaka is still oimedis the rishus of the bailim, and therefore it's still considered under the, the, the jurisdiction, the authority of the owner, and he can't be maktish because he can be moitzi with day on him. Whereas metaltalin, they're, so to speak, more stolen from him. They're more further away from him, not just physically, but also in terms of Kinyanin, because the Gazlan did the Kinyan Gezela, and we know metaltalin is the Gezela, it's Karaka, not what metaltalin is. And therefore, you cannot be matched metaltalin if you can't be moitzi with Dayanim. Even if you can, excuse me, be moitzi with Dayanim, you cannot be uh, matched. And that was the same in the Rebbe Yochanan, that Shane Shane and Yechon Yeah, well. The is, in our case, if he that is an excellent question. Um, you basically, if I'm not mistaken, mechaven to what Rabbi Kiva Ege says in the Gil in Ashas, uh, the masusa is not being held by anybody, actually. The masusa in Agamara is not being held by anybody. Um, if it would be held by both of them, then we would, I think, say, it's not being held by any, any of them. And that's Rabbi Kiva Ege's question over here. If it's not being held by any of them, and they're just speaking about it, and you don't have the Kinyani Gezele either. Kinyani Gezele require Hagba or Mashicha or something like this. Right, all of these things, exactly. Shinui Rishus, yeah, yeah, it could be, could be, it's like, it's like uh, Mashicha, yeah. But if you didn't just do the Kinyan, you don't have Kinyani Gezele. So that Rabbi Kiva Ege, for your homework, I'll leave you in the Gil and Ashas over here, speaks about, and he, and he, and he leaves, he leaves it with Sarachion, how the Gemara should have really been Mechalic between if you did a Kinyan and if you didn't do a Kinyan. Why is the Gemara being mechalic between the Masus of Matantalin and the Masus of Karakoi? But, okay, that's, that's high-level Rabbi Kiva Ege's question. But on a simple understanding of the Gemara, that that's the difference. The Matantalin, you have a Kenyan Gezela, and then Bakaka, you don't. Let's go, um, let's, let's go back. Tani Rav Tachlifa Bar Ma'arova Kimei the Rebbe Yabol. This following, we have in the following Bryce. Shnaim Adukin Matalis. We have in the Mishnah Shnaim Oichsin Matalis. We have now Shnaim Adukim Batalis. What's Shnaim Adukim Batalis? Zen Noitel Ad Mokam Shayodim Agas. Let's recap. The Talis we said was that maybe let's say a Talis of Hefke, that they're arguing about it. This one said I picked it up first. This one said I picked it up first. Getting back to the Mishnah of Matia. So this price is talking about a similar case, but it says something different. Zen Noitel Ad Mokam Shayodim Agas. This Reuben who's holding this side of the Talis takes as much as is in his hand. If it's as much as he's holding, he takes. And the other party, Shimon, who's holding the other side, takes whatever he is in his hand. And the rest, which is in neither of their hands, in other words, if you picture a big tablecloth or a big uh, sheet or something, and one of them's holding a bunch of it in his hand, one of the, the other guy from the other side is holding a bunch of it in his hand, and there's this area in the middle that nobody's holding, they're both arguing who, arguing who it is, but nobody's holding it. That has to how to do the haluka. The, the, the part which is in Reuben's hand, he keeps, for sure. The part that's in Shimon's hands, he keeps. The, in the middle, you divide. So let's say if Reuben happens to be holding more, he'll get more. If Shimon's holding less, he'll get less. But the chalik in the middle, which nobody is holding, that they divide equally. That's what the sack of the um, rice is. And then the Gemara says, Machvile Rebbe Avo. He, he put his hands up and showed Uva Shvua. You still have to make a Shvua. These two parties, like we saw in the Mishnah, we don't just say Yachloiku, we say Yachloiku B'Shvua. Each one has to make a Shvua. He hasn't got less than a half. We saw why that was the Nusach. But they have to make a Shvua. <clears throat> now, Toysus over here explains that they have to make, each one has to make a Shvua on everything 
not only the part in the middle what they're dividing, he has to make a shrua on, even the part which is in his hand, he has to make a shrua on. In other words, the Gemara is a little bit vague when it says Uba Shrua, maybe that only means the part which they divide in the middle that nobody's holding. You need to make a shrua. But perhaps the part that's holding in his hand wouldn't need a shrua. And that could be maybe the Ramam's opinion. But the Toysus here every year on the page says that no, they both have to make a shrua on everything they're going to take. Everything that's in his hand and half of the part which is not in his hand, <coughs> you have to make a shrua. Fine. Then the Gemara says, Elamis Nisan to Katani, the Palgi Bahadadi, the Mishnah which says you make a chaluka. The mission never made this differentiation that the part which you're holding you can keep and, and the rest you divide equally. The mission said you divide everything equally. Sounds like maybe even if one's holding more than the other one. When they get more, how do you find the case of the mission that they divide equally? They're grabbing onto the very end, the fringes of the baguette. That's the case of the mission. Otherwise, you have a baguette, a big baguette. And Ruben's holding Mamish the fringes, almost like the tzitzis of the beged, and, and then and he's just holding onto the very, very end of the beged, and the other party is holding on the end of the beged, and then the Mishnah says, Yachloiku. In other words, the Mishnah is dealing in a case where none of the talis is actually in the hands of the parties, rather they're both holding it through the fringes at the edge. That's how they cut, they walk into beds, and that's how we see them, each of them holding onto the fringes. That's, that's Tisi Pekar Kashta, that they are grabbing onto the End, edges. That's the Mishnah. The Mishnah's case of Shnaim Oaks and Vitalis, you can trick someone if you want to ask them a trick question. The Mishnah says Shnaim Oaks and Vitalis, yeah, everyone thinks they're holding onto the Talis, the actual Talis, right? The, 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 the Guf Vitalis, the main part of the Begin. The Gemara says here they're not, they're holding onto Mamas, the very edges, the fringes of the Talis, that's where they're holding. And the Mishnah says they, 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 they divide the whole Talis, but that's how they're holding it. Because if they would be holding the Talis more than that, they would. Then, then they would, then then they wouldn't be dividing it equally, exactly. They, they would each take as much as they're holding in their hand. And the chalik of the talis, which is not held by anyone, you divide equally. That's what the Gemara says. Omar Rav Masharshia. Yeah. Yeah. Case of three quarters, because one says, I, Echa says Kula Sheli, and Echa says Chetzia Sheli. One said, I picked it up first. And the other guy says, we picked it up together. In that case, we make a division of three quarters and a quarter. But it doesn't mean to say that they're holding it in his hand. The one gets three quarters because he's claiming he picked it up first. And the other person is moider to him that you got at least a half in it. And they're arguing about the second half and they divide the second half. But it doesn't mean to say that he's holding it in his hand. It says the Gemara, Omar Rav Masharshi, Shema Hai Sudra. This Sudra, Kevan the Tophis, Be Shalosh Al Shalosh, Karin and Be, Venosan Lurieyu. The command the posik dami vakani. This requires a little bit of background. We know there's a Kenyan called Kenyan Suda. Kenyan Suda. What's Kenyan Suda? Oh, everyone's doing this. Very good. Kenyan Suda is exactly this, right? Um, we're familiar with it because it sometimes happens when we either do Mechiras Chomet, sometimes we do it, and in any event. But the, the standard case of, of, of Kenyan Suda is I, if, if the, if the Moicha wants to sell an object to the Koine, so the Koine gives the purchaser hands over to the Makne. A kli from the Pasuk in Rus says, V'sholach ish na'alo, Yvanathan the Reyehu, he gave his shoe and gave it to the Reyehu. You're doing Mechiris Chomets off and the Rav gives you his, his, his kippah or whatever it is. Yeah, and, and then you do a hagba on it. We do it under the, under the chupa for this. Chavit of the Ksuba, I think. We often use Kenyan suit to be Mechayven, but, 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 but the classic case is for Mechira. We say that the Kalim of the Koine, he has to give it over to the Makne. And the Makne takes the Kli of the Koine and it's like Sir to speak Chalipim. And in place of that, Small kli that the makne got his makne the, the item that he's selling over. So what happens if you're dealing with a suda? Not just a small kipper that we use. It's a bigger beged. And what happens if the the makne only grabs a small part of the beged? So it's a larger beged. He grabs shalosh al shalosh means shalosh at boys. If you have that's the minimum shear of a beged is like Abi Saras and I think other dinim is is, is three at boys but three at boys a little square like this. That's the minimum shear of a beged. So the Gemara wants to say, Omer of Mesharshio, Shema Mano, Hai Sudra, Kevan the Tophis, Beis Shalosh Al Shalosh, Karin and Beva, Nostan Lariyayu. As long as the person's holding at least three by three on that Suda, the Suda was the bigger, let's say, sheet he was using, and he grabbed three by three, it's considered a good king in Khalif. And why? The commander Posik Dami Vakani. Right? It's as if it's cut off. It's as if we view that three by three as a separate beggar 
separate entity in and of itself. How do you see that? It's just like we're saying in Shnai Moichs in Metalis, or Zem Noitel Ad Mochem Shiyodo Megas. We say the Chalik which you're holding in your hand, actually, we say you take that amount. So in a certain degree, we view it as a separate palace, right? That that's your little talus that's yours. And the your half your is your little talus, which is yours. And the middle you divide. So we see a sort of commander pasik dummy. We view what's in your hand as, as if it's cut off from the rest. And it's a separate unit within your hand. So too, when it comes to Kenyan Suda, don't say maybe there's not a good Kenyan Suda over here because you're not holding the entire uh, plea that the coin is giving over to you. No, it's okay. As long as you're holding it, which is the minimum shear of a beged, then we say, you've given over to the, the purchaser, has given over to the seller a kli, even though he's still not holding the entire kli, the, the, the seller, he's holding only a little bit, but we say the aside that whatever's in his hand, it's as if it's separate. So it's considered that he, that he is holding an entire kli. Let's just finish off the Gemara. Um, the Gemara asks, so, so therefore, that's what we're saying, that if you grab half of it, it's, uh, it's, it's as if it's cut off. It says the Gemara, What's the difference from the case of Rav Chista? The Amr Rav Chista, get b'yoda, u'mashicha b'yoda. This is the case of Gitin. Now we know in order for a man to divorce his wife, he has to give her a get, as we know. It's not enough that he says he's divorcing her, it's not enough that he does Kenyan, whatever Kenyan he wants, he has to give her a safer, it's called a safer crisis, Costa of la Sefer Crisis, for Nosan Biyoda, he has to write a Sefer Crisis and give it into her hand. For Nosan Biyoda, he has to give it into her hand. Now, the Gemara is dealing with an exceptionally interesting case that he gives a get over to his wife. However, he ties a piece of string onto the get. So that even while the get is in her hand, he's still got the ability to pull the get out of her hand with the string. So, is such a get a good get or not? Right? So, so the Gemara said, Im Yochel Nanaskoi. If the string, let's say, is strong enough, it's not this flimsy little piece of cotton wool, if it's strong enough that he can actually whip it back out of her hands and get it to him, then Eina Mugureshes, she's not divorced. That wasn't a good, halakhically considered a good Messina, because you still got the uh, option, the Shlita, to bring it back to you. You haven't really given it out of your Rishus, because you could just pull it back. However, in love, if it's such a small, let's say, weak string, then Mugureshes. So what's the Gemara asking? The Gemara is asking, the simple understanding of the Gemara is we're saying by the Kenyan Suda, right? That as long as the perch, as long as the seller grabs three by three of the beged, we say it's a good Kenyan Suda, and we view this three by three in his hands as a separate entity. But the Gemara is saying that still the purchaser who's holding or potentially holding the other half of this beged can still pull it away from him. And if the, the purchaser has to give over, like we said, his clee to the makne to make the Kenyan Suda. But if he gives over the beged and the purchaser grabs a chalik of the beged three by three, even if halachically it's considered cut off, but still the, the purchaser's got the option to pull it back towards him. If, if that's true, it's not a good nesina. Just like we say by gitin, if you give something with the option of pulling it back to you, that's not called a halachic nesina. So too by Kenyan Suda, where the coin has to give over to the matne, if he gives him a clee that he can still pull back, it's not a good nesina. Then the Gemara says... <clears throat> And we'll conclude with this over there by Gerish, and there's a special halacha called Krisus. The Torah says, He has to write to a Sefer Krisus. Krisus means karet, cut off. You have to cut her off when you're divorcing her. And we learn many joshes from the word Krisus. One of them over here is this halacha. It has to be given in a way that she is, that you've cut her off with a get and you can't pull it back. Right, so in, in other words, when it comes to normal giving things like Kenyan Suda, where there's no special requirement, requirement of Krisis, then once you've given it over, even if you can pull it back, that is called an Asina. Now, luckily, it's called an Asina, even though you can pull it back, because Soif Soif Lamaisi, you gave it over, and the person's holding it, even though you can pull it back. When it comes to Krisis, we require a higher standard of Messina, where there's more, the stronger Gadarim of Messina, and if and it calls man, you could still pull it back to you, that's not called, called a Krisis. So that's why the Gemara says that it's not a question on us from Gittin, because Get's got different parameters about how you view a Nasina of a Get. But Nasina of a Suda, it's enough that you give it over and he's holding three by three, which is command the Posik dummy. And we don't say that uh, it's going to make it worse, the fact that the buyer can still pull it back. So, we'll stop here for today.